Hi, my name is Matthew Ravel and I'm here to tell you about Couchbase Server 4.0. In particular, our new query language, Nickel, which is a SQL-like language for querying JSON documents. So, let's take a look. First up, let's take a look at the basics, just in case this is your first time with Couchbase Server. Couchbase Server is a distributed document database. It works natively with JSON documents, giving you three different ways of querying your data from simple key value, through MapReduce, and now SQL-like ad hoc querying with Nickel. As you're working directly with JSON, it's easier and faster to build your apps. You've got the flexibility of being able to change your data schema from one document to the next, and there's no mismatch between your data model and your objects. Thanks to an integrated memcache D layer, you get sub-millisecond response times, and you no longer need to worry about handling cache misses in your application layer. When you need it, Couchbase is ready to scale out from one server up to large clusters. Simply rack up a new server or VM, let Couchbase know where it is, and then your data gets redistributed around the cluster, all while still serving reads and accepting writes. All your data is automatically sharded, replicated, and distributed. As a developer, all you need to do is create a connection object using our native language SDKs, and then read from and write to the cluster as though it were a single entity, allowing Couchbase Server to handle the detail of where everything is stored. So, what's new in Couchbase Server 4.0? Well, we've already had a sneak preview of Nickel, the SQL-like querying language for JSON, and underlying that is our new secondary indexing engine, GSI, or Global Secondary Indexes. Now, when you come to enlarge your cluster, there are now new options for scaling, and we call that multi-dimensional scaling. So you can still scale out by adding more machines, but we now allow you to specialize certain nodes to certain tasks. So for example, you can have data nodes, which accept reads and writes. You can have indexing nodes, and you can have query nodes. And this allows you to scale up the RAM on data nodes because you want to increase the availability for caching, or maybe increase the CPU on query nodes. Now, going back to querying, there's spatial querying has now gone GA in Couchbase Server 4.0. This allows you to do multi-dimensional and geographic style queries using the view engine. On the security side, there's LDAP integration and admin auditing. And then at a slightly lower level, there's ForestDB, which is our new key value storage engine that currently lies under GSI, but you'll see much more of it in the future of Couchbase. And if you have a particularly large Couchbase installation across more than one cluster, you might be pleased to know that Cross Data Center Replication now has filtering, allowing you to tweak exactly what is replicated between clusters. Here is CBQ, the nickel query shell. Now this is where we can try things out and we're going to have a little play with the travel sample which comes with Couchbase 4.0. To get a feel for it, we'll do a count of all the documents in the travel sample bucket. And you see what we get back is JSON. Here we see that we have 31,569 results, and then we have a bit of metadata that tells us how long it took and so on. Let's try it where we actually get some JSON back from our data set. Let's look for airlines in the United States. Hit return and you see that we get some JSON back with airline details. To do anything useful, we need to put it together with other data. So we have airports and then routes, and routes are interesting because they have nested in them the schedule of which planes are going from Heathrow to San Francisco or which other airports according to each airline. And we want to pull that out so we can get every single flight from one airport to another. And we'll do that by unnesting the data from that document and then joining it together with other documents. So now this query looks through all of our documents and searches for where there's a source airport of LHR and a destination airport of SFO. And now it will take those documents and find in there the airline ID 
and join that to the documents whose key matches the airline ID. So we're doing a join across documents, not across tables or buckets. We could do a bucket join if we wanted to, but here we're going to do a document to document join inside the same bucket. And then we're going to take out of that root information. Remember the root information we just looked at had nested in it the individual flights. We're going to take that out by using the unnest keyword. And we're going to unnest that data and call it S. We'll alias it as S. Now we can use S in our query. So you'll see that we go and S dot day equals one. So what we're saying is only give me back the flights that are on day one or Monday and then order by the UTC time that we find in that query. Um, so we're doing a, almost a three sided join to give us all the flights from LHR to SFO. Let's see how it looks. And it comes back with all that flight information so we can see that now the flight details, the schedule information such as the time has been pushed up into the same level. It's been pushed up to the same unnested level. And then we can go through and we simply have a list of all of the flights from Heathrow to San Francisco, the airline details and the time. When you come to build your applications, you can pass the nickel queries over from the SDK and then receive the results back. With the Java client, there's a Nickel Query Builder API. For .NET, there's Link Integration. And for Node.js, there's Ottoman, our new ODM that takes your models and turns them into couch-based documents, as well as the relevant Nickel queries. Underneath Nickel is GSI, or Global Secondary Indexing, and this is another new feature in Couchbase 4.0. So let's have a look at what it does and how it differs from the View Engine. If you know Couchbase already, you'll recognize this as a Couchbase cluster. And you'll probably also see that there are two new services on each node. There's an index service and a query service. So query is Nickel and index is Global Secondary Indexes. Then the data service is the Couchbase that we know already, the Persistence to Disk and the View Engine. This is where multi-dimensional scaling comes in. So as we have these three independent services of data, query and index, it makes sense that we should be able to choose how much of them we have across the cluster. So by default, you might want to set up your cluster with all three of them running on every node. However, as your needs change, you can choose which nodes run which services. So if it makes sense for you, you could have dedicated indexer nodes that perhaps have more CPU and dedicated data nodes that perhaps have more RAM to take care of the caching side of things. With spatial indexes, we now have three types of indexing in Couchbase. It's fairly obvious when to use spatial indexes, but what are the differences between GSI and views? The view engine and the indexes that it creates lives alongside the data on each machine, whereas the new indexes for GSIs are independent services. As GSIs are only available as an underpinning to Nickel, this really becomes a question more of do I use views or do I use Nickel? The answer to that depends on your use case and your data model. However, Nickel is now the primary ad hoc query method for Couchbase. Still, views have their uses, of course, particularly if you're doing aggregation of data across multiple documents. A major new addition to the view engine in 4.0 is spatial querying. Now, the travel sample comes in useful here again. Let's take a look. The sample comes with two views, and we're going to look at the places of interest, or POI. Here we have a, a compound key made up of four dimensions. Each one has to be numeric, so we've got longitude, latitude, altitude, and then we've assigned each type of place of interest to a particular number, so we can include it in the query. So then let's make use of this geographic information we've got. Let's go to Google Maps and find the most southwesterly point of London, let's say, somewhere down by Guildford. And we'll copy the coordinates there. And then pop them into the start range here. So we can filter the results uh, that this view gives us by giving a start range. And of course you could do this uh, through the normal views rest API. So we could be using something like Postman or just curling uh, our queries up. We will go and find the northeast point that, of our box around London. So somewhere up near Chelmsford. Uh, and then we'll feed that into the end of the range. Now it's worth noting that unlike a normal compound key in a Couchbase view, uh, we can have one of the middle values being null and then still have an actual value further on in the 
the list. So you'll see here we've got null as the altitude because we're not going to worry too much about the height of our place of interest but then we have specified what type of place we're looking for. And the effect of null is that it gives us an open range. Now let's view the results and you see that we get all of the airports that were within our boundary uh, for that query. So here's the record for London Heliport that was returned as part of our query. ForestDB makes its debut in Couchbase Server 4.0 as the storage engine under global secondary indexes. Now we've been thinking for a while about how best to store data on disk and our requirements were that the indexes should be small, the system should be fast, it should be equally good at reads as well as writes, and that it should scale from very small devices like mobile phones up to huge servers. Clearly there's a lot of details to go into with ForestDB and we're not going to do that right now. But basically the index structure for ForestDB is based on a tri tree, which is a prefix tree for efficiently dealing with long variable length keys. And each node of the tri tree is based on a B plus tree. And well, because there's a lot of trees there, we called it ForestDB. Already we've covered a great deal, but there's still more to Couchbase Server 4.0. And you can see some of those additional features listed here. Thanks so much for watching. I hope that some of this has whet your appetite and has got you excited about Couchbase Server 4.0. Like I say, there's so much more to learn, there's so much more to go into, and not enough time here. So the best thing to do is go to developer.couchbase.com where you'll find our documentation and more, blog.couchbase.com where you'll find some more in-depth articles about Couchbase, forums.couchbase.com where you'll get help from the community. And if you're ready to download, then go to couchbase.com slash get started developing NoSQL. Thanks very much, my name is Matthew Ravel. You can find me on the forums at couchbase.com as well and I hope to see you there.